Ah, yeah. It's starting to feel a lot more like fall. I mean, it's almost October, people. Break out the pumpkin spice. I mean, I'm looking for a different word here. Not pumpkin spice. Pigskin. Pigskin, baby. It's Friday Night Fever time, our game of the week. Featured two powerhouse programs, one trying to remain undefeated and the other desperately trying not to fall to one in three. The undefeated Amory Panthers hosted the hungry New Albany Bulldogs. Let's head to Amory right now. And bringing your own banner to burst through on the road? That's bold, but uh, I kind of like it. Amory looking for some fireworks in this one to stay undefeated. Ooh, speaking of fireworks. Ooh, fireworks. Okay, back to the game. Hunter Jones screen pass to Jay Hampton. Goes for a nice gain into enemy territory. He's got some wheels, folks, but the opening drive for the Panthers stalls out. New Albany's next possession. Joe Mathis takes the snap, drops back. Throws one up to Isaiah Coran and ooh, one handed. I see you, son. Give that a da -na -na, na -na -na. beautiful catch. However, the drive stalls and the Bulldogs settle for a field goal. After another Bulldog stop, Mathis fakes the handoff and he's off to the races. But ooh, did he lose the football? Refs say he was down. Next three plays, however, three fumbled snaps. And almost another fumble taken away by the Panthers, but he was ruled down again. New Albany had to punt. However, the Bulldogs, they poured it on in the second half. They get back to 500 while Amory suffers its first loss of the season. Still 3 and 1, not too shabby. 31 to 10. The battle for the 3-7-1 cup between Mantachi and Morville. Second quarter, Jacob Hawks finds Patrick Mangles, the fullback, and he's rocking that neck roll like it's 1999. A few plays later, ball snapped to Jake Spradling, and he finds the end zone. The Mustangs cut the trooper lead to two touchdowns just before the half. Morville tries to get its three-touchdown lead back, however, with a two-minute drill. Dawson Phillips fires an absolute strike to his tight end over the middle. Beautiful play there, but after a sack and a holding penalty, Morville back into its own territory. Phillips hits Hagen Allen, and it's under 12 seconds to go. Tick, 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 time ticking away. Morville able to get the snap off, but they can't do anything with it. Have no fear, Trooper fans. Morville took care of business in the second half. They go on to win 48 to 22. And moving to the blue turf of Tupelo, the Golden Wave trailing 14 to 7 at the half, but they came out firing in the second. Jarius McGinnister breaks into the secondary, showing off some strength in the sweet feet to get the wave inside the 30 yard line. Couple of plays later, the thunder to McGinnister's lightning. Sophomore Kyson Brown, strong run to the 12 yard line of Hernando. First and 10. Next play, jet sweep to KD Gibson. He finds the outside and he's got the goal line in its sights and tries to stretch out. Ooh, down at the one yard line. But Kaisen Brown says, No sweat, bro. I got you. And barrels his way over the goal line to bring the wave within a point. And as they say during Shakespearean times, there in lies the rub. Tuplo missed the extra point on a bad snap, then failed a two point conversion, and they fall to one and three at home. 21. To 19. All right, let's go to Calhoun Academy taking on North Sunflower Academy. And I don't have a shot sheet for this one, so we're just, I'm seeing this for the first time along with you. It's homecoming. Off to the right side, nice little run there. North Sunflower Academy on the going down into Calhoun Academy territory. Next play passes up top, touchdown. Oh, drops it right in the basket. Beautiful play right there. Does Calhoun Academy do the answer on this one? Let's see this. All right, rolls out. No, oh, that's not looking good for Calhoun Academy. Sack lunch. Num, 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 num. Let's see the final for this one. Did they come back? No, North Sunflower Academy, they take care of business. 42 to 12. All right, we'll stay in Calhoun City. But we're going to Calhoun City. They host North Pontotoc. North Pontotoc undefeated on the season. Calhoun City QB Jackson Lee hands off to Tomix Claxton. That's good for eight yards. Tough eight yards. There's MD Jennings. Used to play for the Packers. Now he's coaching Calhoun City in his hometown. Calhoun City goes to the Wildcat. Jalen Artbury for the four-yard run. Two-point conversion on this one. 
No good. 16 to 7. Calhoun City, or it was good, 16 to 7 Calhoun City. That's how math works. North Pontotoc QB, Reese Kentver, passed to Tyler Ford. Four yard completion. Who won this one? Show me. Calhoun City, they hand North Pontotoc their first loss of the season. And a little bit further down the road, going to Houston, homecoming. The king and the queen, all hail the king and queen of Houston, the Hilltoppers. Let's get to the action now. Itawamba Ag on offense. Ty Davis hands off to Marque Marqueon Green. Tackle from behind by Jamal Cooper. Two-yard loss. Itawamba, 25-yard field goal. That's good, but Houston was winning 14-6. to Itawamba kicks off to Jalen Washington, and he is reversing field, finds a seam, and he go. 70 yards for the kickoff return. One of the most electrifying plays in sports. Houston goes on to win 28 to 14 on homecoming night. Now let's go to Myrtle. They're hosting Biggersville and Biggersville's head coach Stan Platt. Got it in last minute. Here we go. Ooh, little cute little squib there, but number one, he's got it. Zay Davis picks it up. And he goes 80 yards to the house. See you later. And the Lions, they stay undefeated. They are a train, a rolling train, and you got to get out of the way. 52 to 0. All right, East Union, the Urchins hosting the Hatley Tigers. Second quarter, Urchins QB Hayden Roberts pitches to Colton Plunk. Five yard touchdown run. Cheerleaders are saying, hey, <laughs> we like that. Now, Hatley QB drops back, throws it 49 yards down to the one yard line. And Hatley takes it in for the score. <laughs> Look at that. All right, Hatley Tigers sticking with it, but it's East. Union all over the Hatley Tigers. That was their only score of the night, and we got it, 49-7. to seven. And now it's time for the illustrious, our most sacred award, the cheer team of the week. Nearly 2,000 people weighed in on this vote on our Instagram. That's huge. That's a new record. I dare next week's teams to do better. But here's Amory, our cheer team of the week. Take it away, girls. The Friday Night Fever Cheer Squad of the Week is sponsored by Magnolia Soap and Bath Company. Welcome back to Friday Night Fever. I'm Matt St. Jean. Massive game went on down in West Point tonight. The Lafayette Commodores heading into the land of the Green Wave, trying to take down the four-time defending champs. And from what I hear, they almost did. Rhea Thompson is live down at West Point. Rhea, was it a close game? Like, give, us, give us the deets here. Thanks, Matt. It was a close game. I'm in West Point High School where the Green Waves took on Lafayette. Both teams came into tonight at 2 and 1, but West Point was up at half 14 to 0. After a fumble recovery by the Green Waves, Chris Ivey throws a quick pass out to senior Trey Ryland, turning on the Jets and takes it down the sidelines. No one even close to him. Green Waves stretches their lead to 21 to 0. But the Commodores won't go down easily. A handoff to Chakayas Woodall, and he is untouched, finding a massive hole to give Lafayette their first score of the game. Commodores go for two to make it 21 to eight, but ultimately it was the Green Waves who were triumphant tonight with a 21 to 15 victory over Lafayette. So it was West Point who advances to three and one, while Lafayette falls to two and two. Big conference win tonight for the Green Waves. West Point will be traveling to Saltillo next week, while Lafayette go, uh, will be at home. Excuse me. Playing against Grenada. Reporting live in West Point for Friday Night Fever, Rhea Thornton, WTVA 9 Sports. All right, thanks, Rhea. Another huge game. This one at South Panola between South Panola and Starkville. Here we are, South Panola getting off to a hot start. Ontario Draper to Cameron Wright for the touchdown. Six 
nothing. Starkville undefeated and on the ropes. The cheerleaders love it. But Starkville, they're undefeated for a reason. They've got a D1 quarterback in Lute Allmeyer. He fumbles it right there, though, and it's recovered by South Panola. The home team had some momentum going. But as you can see, the momentum was all for naught because Starkville runs away with this one 38 to 20 to stay undefeated. Big message game there by the Yellow Jackets. Let's go down to Columbus. Battle between two Columbus schools Columbus and New Hope. Falcons, no, it's Trojans QB, drops back to pass, but junior Dietrich McCray. Oh, what's that, Waito? What's we serving up today? Oh, check. No, 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 no. All right, and here's Columbus on the drive now. Connor rounds. He gets the corner and gets the first down for the Falcons. Sets them up in great field possession. But after a penalty, settles, Columbus has to settle for the field goal. And that might be the biggest field goal kicker I've ever seen in my life. But he makes it 23 to 7. Columbus goes on to beat in town rival New Hope. All right, back up to West Point. This time we're going to Oak Hill Academy as they host Marshall Academy. Patriots up 19 to 14 halfway through the second quarter and showed no signs of stopping. Hand off to Jimmy Morales staying on his feet. He and several other Patriots run the ball up to the goal line, setting up this dime of a pass. Oh, what a catch! Oh, put that on ESPN. He got moused. Rusty Bolden extends the Marshall Academy lead to 25 to 14. Marshall Academy goes on to win 32 to 14. And we didn't mention it except for the score thing at the bottom, but TCPS, they are outrageous, scoring so many touchdowns. Kai Holiday is a one-man wrecking crew. I had to give him a shout-out as they're coming back from their game right now. They played Noxipater. We'll have a final score over on our website. But it's, he scored nine touchdowns by himself last week. And I think he had like six or seven tonight. That's insane. Those are video game numbers. He's like playing Madden out there with people. Okay. All right. So Friday Night Fever, week four in the books. Week five coming back next Friday. And we've got some great games coming. If you want to see a game of the week, if you want to see us feature your town, get at me on Twitter, shoot me an email, make your case for why I should come to your town and feature that massive game. There are so many great athletes all over Northeast Mississippi. It's just an honor to get out and check it out. Every stadium has its own character. Every fan is passionate about their hometown. And that's why I love doing what I do. And I'll continue to do it as long as you'll have me. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next Friday for another edition of Friday Night Fever. But for right now, have a good weekend and enjoy having SEC football back on your Saturday.